Hello, this is Kenneth Wong, contributing editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. Among skeptics, one of the most frequently used arguments against direct modeling, also known as history-free modeling, goes something like this. If you shape your model by directly manipulating the geometry, you're not really preserving the historical steps, or, for the lack of a better word, the recipe required to create the part. Consequently, if you need to go back to a certain step and adjust a depth or a radius, you're in trouble. Well, last week, Siemens PLM software delivered a copy of Solid Edge with Synchronous Technology 2 to me. I have to tell you that argument we just heard above just won't fly anymore, at least not with Synchronous Technology's approach to direct modeling. Here's a fairly standard part I just created. There's no history tree in the traditional sense, but there's a stack of features. So if I do change my mind about a radius or a depth, I can still go back and change that feature. And there's another argument I've heard used against direct modeling. You lose design intent. Well, if by design intent you mean certain relationships you want to keep between surfaces and features, that won't be a valid argument with synchronous technology either. Let's take a look at this feature that's mirrored on the other side. The software understands that I created this part as a symmetrical pair. So if I do make a change on one side, the other side reflects that too. But if I do decide to break the symmetry, I have the option to do that also. I simply turn off what's called live rules. That's the engine that keeps track of parallel, coincident, tangent and other geometric relationships. Then make the edit. See? Now the change appears only on one side, but not the other side. Because the stack of features in Solid Edge is not in a hierarchical order, you don't need to worry about the order in which they come. Let me show you. I'm just rearranging these blends and holes and rounds and extrusions here and there. It's not exactly going to break the model, and that's something you cannot do in a history-based model without risking some geometry regeneration failure. Solid Edge with Synchronous lets you push, pull, rotate and turn features and faces in any direction at any angle by the use of this cartwheel. Once you select a face or an edge, it just appears. And you can reposition it somewhere else to make sure your rotation angle or your pull depth begins at a certain point. You can change the direction of the push-pull arrow by alternately clicking on the primary and the secondary handles. In other words, the short and the long handles. This method allows you to make fairly complex changes, like this little wall bridging the cylinder and the side walls involving rounds and blends. My first encounter with synchronous technology here makes me rethink how we design. Traditionally, when you're modeling something in a mechanical CAD program, you ought to be pretty certain about the end results you want, because reversing historical steps is just not that simple. But in a history-free direct modeler like Solid Edge with Synchronous, you can be experimental, use features as placeholders if you're not sure, and model a part with imprecise dimensions deliberately while you're trying out several competing ideas, because you know you can easily move your features around and adjust the dimensions later on. This second-generation synchronous technology from Siemens PLM software comes with something called live sections. These are cross-sectional views that you can use to make adjustments to your models. Here's one simple example of how it works. Synchronous technology is obviously a hefty topic to discuss. I can't do justice to it with one five minutes video clip, so more reports on the way. Till next time, this is Kenneth Wong for Desktop Engineering Magazine, reporting from somewhere inside Synchronous Technology 2.